This is our news, the weekend edition. And on the broadcast tonight, expanding national health insurance to cover catastrophic care. Plus, Exuma's MP calls for much-needed upgrades to that island's airport. And the head of the Contractors Association says Bahamians are capable of building the point development. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles and thanks so much for joining us. Na topping news tonight, National Health Insurance Authority Chairman Dr. Robin Roberts says the NHIA is waiting for the go-ahead from the Minnesota administration to expand NHI to include catastrophic care. Dr. Roberts says while they wait on that decision, they're doing all the background work needed to make it happen as soon as possible. Jasmine Brown reports. Dr. Roberts was asked about the much-anticipated launch of the critical care aspect of NHI, and this was his response. Now that is a government decision. The NHI chairman says the fact of the matter is the authority had hoped phase two of the program would have already been implemented. We were hoping we would have been able to do that this year. But of course, of course, you know, the hurricane has railroaded a lot of projects and plans, and so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, we are looking forward to implementing that. We have not stopped in our plans. In fact, we have almost designed the program for the next phase, both in terms of legislation and its policies and engaging the individuals who will be involved in providing the care. So we are well ahead, waiting for when the government gives us the okay and said we are ready to move. In his mid-year budget communication, Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands revealed NHI was allocated $20 million in the current budget. However, he said, due to the steady increase in the number of beneficiaries and the associated payments to health care providers and laboratories, NHI is forecast to spend approximately $29.7 million. That's $9.7 million more than what was originally allocated. NHI Executive Director Graham Whitmarsh has said the increase in cost is not considered an overrun. Meantime, Roberts also sought to dispel concerns raised about the current services offered by NHI. I've heard this where s s people have said to me that the NHI doctor said they can only visit twice a year or something like that. That is, I, I think that is, uh, to me, I almost consider that fake news. And any patient who says that uh, they have problems accessing a doctor and there's a limitation, we would like to know that. We would really like to know that. The Christie administration introduced the enrollment and primary care phase of NHI on May 1st, 2017. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, the airport in Exuma lacks capacity, that according to Area Member of Parliament Chester Cooper. The opposition's deputy leader says the airport's current state is hurting that island's economy. Bertha e. McDormand reports. Though Exuma's economy continues to grow, Area MP Chester Cooper says the island has suffered because of its inadequate airport. He's calling on government to make long-awaited upgrades. In June 2018, government secured two loans totaling $70 million from the Inter-American Development Bank for infrastructure upgrades for four airports, including Exuma International Airport. At the time, Aviation Minister Dionisio Diager said government expected to break ground by January 2019. Cooper asked, what's the holdup? We anticipated that by now the construction would begin. Uh, the Minister of Tourism and Aviation pointed out that the uh, RFP process has started. Uh, the bottom line is that Exuma is in desperate need of more capacity in terms of the airport facility. The economy is doing extremely well. Uh, on a Saturday, it's, an, it's a, a chaos, chaotic situation at the airport when we have four international flights come in and it's simply very embarrassing as one of the leading destinations in the Bahamas. Cooper added that the delay speaks to a lack of focus on family islands. I think it speaks to a lack of focus in terms of various family island uh, destinations. Uh, we pay a lot of taxes to the central government and we are of the view that we don't get adequate investments in Exuma in particular. 
Additionally, he says the lack of investment is hindering the island's economic growth. I remain very concerned that the lack of investment fast in this airport is impeding some of our development. Certainly many of our foreign direct investors or potential investors who I speak with are very concerned about this airport and they are minded in some respect uh, to delay their projects until they are satisfied that this airport is being properly developed. It's a huge issue, not just for residents, but for foreign direct investors as well. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthini McDermott. A two-day meeting of CARICOM leaders in Barbados addressed some important issues facing the Bahamas. Among them, climate change, the EU blacklisting, the loss of corresponding banking services by international commercial banks, and even the global health scare with the spread of the coronavirus. Among the Bahamian delegation was Foreign Affairs Minister Darren Henfield, who held a bilateral meeting with his Canadian counterpart. It was an opportunity to say thank you for the assistance given by the Canadians in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian and to raise some growing concerns with Canada. Canada was, was very instrumental in moving troops with their military aircraft, with uh, sending us dogs for search and rescue, uh, donated I think 500,000 which went toward the, the Red Cross. I was very supportive throughout the entire ordeal ongoing with, with Dorian. Actually the Foreign Minister, formerly, who is now the Deputy Prime Minister, Freeland called me several times during the event uh, because we have a personal relationship in that way. And then we were able to share with them uh, our views on some of the travel advisories that they issue. Uh, we think they're quite arbitrary at times without consultation, just taking one side of the story without speaking to us. Uh, they, they seem to understand Canada seeks to deepen its relations with not only the Bahamas but the entire CARICOM community. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was scheduled to meet with CARICOM leaders during the meeting, but mass protests at home forced him to cancel at the very last minute and send his foreign affairs minister instead. It meant that many of the face-to-face -face meetings expected with leaders had to be reconfigured. Foreign ministers are empowered to speak for prime ministers, and, and that's, that's normal. Uh, we understand he, his exigencies in Canada, which prohibited him from coming. Uh, it would have been nice if he, if he would have been there to ex have exchanges with CARICOM heads of government, but no, it was, wasn't, wasn't that impactful. Uh, in fact, some, some leaders met with him. Mine was busy at the moment, and so, so I, was, I was instructed to meet with him. Foreign ministers are, are normally engaged with the issues that, that are dealt with by, by CARICOM heads when they meet in caucus like this, when they meet in, 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 in sessions like this to discuss them. We actually uh, set the agenda in most cases. And so the issues that are before us that touch and concern the entire community. It was interesting, um, the chairman, the chairwoman, uh, Mia Motley, Prime Minister for Barbados, she said something that really struck a chord. She said, you know, uh, we are family and family comes before ideology. Now, on all instances, we don't agree, but we strive to agree where we, where we can and, and where, we, where we don't, we, we go in our national interest. Uh, but issues like climate change, issues like banking, financial services, um, graduation, which, which lends problems to our correspondent banking uh, facilities in the Bahamas, blacklisting, graylisting, these things, security concerns that we share in common in this region, uh, we find that the young people, we have to find a way to, to move them away from, from the violence that they engage in, normally perpetrated by weapons that are imported into our region. Uh, and this, this type of activity that is counterproductive to the kind of wholesome, peaceful region that we'd like to achieve in, in the Caribbean. Olympic concerns over the ratio of foreign to Bahamian workers at the point, Bahamas Contractors Association President Michael Pratt is speaking out on the issue. Here again is Berthony McDormand. Following the revelation of foreign workers to Bahamian workers at the point, Pratt says there are more than enough Bahamian contractors to get the job done. Bahamians are quite capable of building the point. The heads of agreement between the point and government calls for a labor ratio of 70% Bahamian workers to 30% foreign workers. However, during the Department of Labor's last inspection, it was revealed that there were 229 Chinese workers, 38 other nationalities, and only 97 Bahamians working on the project. Well, we know it's very difficult to uh, give a head count. We are working with a, you know, we are working with a totally different culture uh, at the point. And um, it's very difficult to give a, a head count from our perspective, in my opinion, of what's going on at the point. We have tried, 
It will last our future prisoners have exhausted uh, the battle to try and uh, acknowledge that the Bahamians, uh, the ratio is not right at the point. His comments come one day after a point official told the Nassau Guardian that the new coronavirus, which originated in Wuhan, China, would affect the point's completion date. The Bahamas has placed the ban on all non-residents who recently visited China. The BCA has insisted that Bahamian contractors are more than capable of completing the project. But it would hinder, in my opinion, um, if it is the senior management or the senior project managers uh, who are involved in the project. Pratt renewed calls for the government to regulate the construction industry. And we know without a shadow of a doubt, once we are given the, our policy makers, uh, give us the opportunity to license and begin to regulate this industry, um, we make a difference, a major difference. No longer, uh, you know, an uh, investor will come in with their projects and believe, have no idea of the amount of uh, workers and contractors that exist in this country who are willing and able to do the work. We are ready. We just need the uh, support. Reporting for our news, I'm Bertha New McDermott. Well, still ahead tonight, the Deputy Prime Minister expresses optimism about Carnival's commitment to the cruise port in Grand Bahama. That story and more coming up. Here you can get everything and more. Get 150% download speed increase than if you got internet alone. An enhanced television experience and 15 phone features all for... Wait, wait, it's still $99? But we boosted the internet speed. I'm just asking. I'm just, okay, fine. Uh, just call 601-2200 and tell them that you want Trio TV, phone, internet for $99. Powered by Rev. You and us together. From the crime beat, it was a busy night for police as they investigated three separate armed robberies. A male and a female were sitting in a vehicle outside a residence in Tropical Gardens when police say they were approached by two armed men who robbed them of cash and a black Nissan Note license plate AS0681. It was a similar encounter for a man sitting in a vehicle on Aeneas Avenue when he was also approached by two armed men. They robbed him of a wallet, iPhone and green Nissan Note license plate AC1885. In the final incident, a man was walking on Dowswell Street when he was robbed of cash and jewelry by a gunman. Police are appealing to members of the public who may have any information that can assist with these investigations to contact the Central Detective Unit at 502-9991 or 2, Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS or the nearest police station. Well, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist telling reporters recently that the government is grateful for Carnival Cruise Line's promise to double its investment in the Grand Bahama cruise port as the island could use the investment following Dorian. We're certainly looking very, very much looking forward to the, um, the investment in, in, in that port as it will uh, help to, with the turnaround uh, and rebuilding process in, in Grand Bahama. As you know, uh, we have uh, uh, had a significant catastrophic uh, loss of, of uh, uh, um, investment uh, in Grand Bahama uh, and this boost uh, will help uh, to bring confidence uh, back to the residents uh, of the island and, and to investors. Turnquist said with the upgrades to hotels and infrastructure on the island, he is hoping that additional investors will see Grand Bahama is open for business. Grand Bahama is open for business, that it is a place that is uh, um, uh, progressing uh, and, and uh, um, a good place to, to live and, and, to, and to earn a, a, a living as well as to create uh, other economic opportunities. We expect that this investment will not only bring direct jobs, but it will also bring spin-off uh, business opportunities for Grand Bahamians. Uh, and so that along with the, um, the hotel, along with the redevelopment of the airport, uh, is going to be a tremendous stimulus uh, to Grand Bahama and, and to the overall economy of the Bahamas. Up next, the importance of getting a flu shot. So stay with us. Rio, you can get everything and more. Get 150% download speed increase than if you got internet alone. An enhanced television experience and 15 phone features all for, wait, wait, it's still $99? But we boosted the internet speed. 
I'm just asking. I'm just, okay, fine. Uh, just call 601-2200 and tell them that you want Trio TV, phone, internet for $99. Powered by Rev. You and us together. Welcome back to our news, the weekend edition. Less than 10% of the population get vaccinated. That's according to Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Delon Brennan. Every year, health officials urge Bahamians to get a flu shot, which are provided free of charge at local clinics. But despite their best efforts, the numbers remain low. We have almost 400,000 people in the populace, and we can't get 30 thousand doses of the the vaccine to be given out on a yearly basis. We don't even Less touch 10 percent. We again. don't even come close to 10 percent of our population that gets a flu shot. And and when you realize everyone who's over the age of six months should get a flu shot every year, you realize that's a huge portion of our population. And we have people who not only get infected with influenza here in the Bahamas, we have people who die in the Bahamas due to influenza and we are not taking it seriously. Uh, thank and despite preventative measures being in place for people to avoid getting the flu, he says Bahamians are not taking advantage. The people who die from the flu are much more likely to be at the extremes of age, so really young children, really old people, or people with comorbidities. But when you look at the Bahamas, our level of comorbidities is crazy. The number of people in the Bahamas who have hypertension, the people who have cardio, other cardiovascular disease, people with diabetes, people with cancer. We know we're an unhealthy population as a whole. Mm. So that means a significant portion of our population fit the criteria for being at high risk of having complications if you were to get influenza. But we're still not getting the preventative measure that we know is sitting out there that could help us from even getting the disease, let alone the, deep, the higher complications that come along with it. We count down the most memorable quotes of the week. That's coming up when our news, The Weekend Edition, returns. Trio, you can get everything and more. Get 150% download speed increase than if you got internet alone, an enhanced television experience, and 15 phone features, all for, wait, Wait, it's still $99? But we boosted the internet speed. I'm just asking. I'm just, okay, fine. Uh, just call 601-2200 and tell them that you want Trio TV, phone, internet for $99. Powered by Rev. You and us together. Finally tonight, it's that time when we take a look back at the most memorable moments of the week in news in our Quote of the Week segment. In at number three is Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine, who says his frequent criticisms of his own party may put a target on his back, but there is no way he will be pushed out of the party. I'm gonna leave when I want to leave. I'm not gonna be pushed out. I'm not gonna be prophesied out. I'm not gonna be prayed out. I'm going to move when I'm led to move, not before. Co-founder of the Head Knowles Foundation, Leah Head, says her hands are clean as she responded to allegations leveled against her in a lawsuit filed by her former partner, Gina Knowles. Her comments take the number two spot. There are a lot of things that are under the surface that I don't understand what's going on really. Um, but I do know that I have my eyes dotted, my T's crossed, and I have um, the State Department, the people who say you're compliant or not. They've already made sure it's done. And um, so when this comes to a head, I guess all will be made uh, clear. And my hands are clean. And taking the top spot for quote of the week is Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who defended Cabinet's decision to increase the travel benefits offered to Cabinet ministers and their spouses. What you don't know is on many occasions, Cabinet ministers, including myself, travel with insufficient funds and use my own credit card to pay government's bills. That happens regularly. So we always have to travel with our own cash. Well, that does it for our Quote of the Week and other stories making news this evening. But stay tuned, our weather forecast is up next.
And that's our news, the weekend edition for this Sunday. I'm Andrew Nold. For all of us here at R News, thank you for watching and good night.